that's when I really started like like suffering like mentally and emotionally, which never has been like a real problem. What's going life. on, guys? I am here with Brian. He was plant based for approximately ten years, being vegan for almost four years at one point. He is going to tell us what sucked him into this plant based lifestyle and how he got started. All right. Thanks, Frank, for the introduction. Um, so what's up, everybody? Um, I'm Brian. And I started checking out vegetarianism, um, veganism um, with this book um, called The Natural Cures They Don't Want You to Know About by Kevin Trudeau. Uh, that really started me on my health journey of just trying to be proactive about the food that I was eating. And um, after reading that book, I began you know, doing my own food shopping. And this is just after graduating high school. So that was around 2005, 2006. It's really where this all started. And um, my first step was I, I went completely organic, 100%. And so I went to Whole Foods, asked the guy, like, what's organic food? And he pointed me to the produce section. I thought, okay, well, so this is my diet now. I was like, great. And uh, I knew, of course, that there was organic meat. It was very expensive. So I kind of mostly stuck to the, the fruits and the vegetables and that sort of stuff. Um, and then getting into college, uh, just about a year later, I met some some guys and he showed me a book about cleansing by uh, Richard Anderson. So he has this book called um, Cleanse and Purify Thyself. I, th I think that's the title. So with that book, I did basically a one month cleansing program where I only ate raw uh, fruits and vegetables. I took a bunch of herbs and the, the fiber shakes to sort of, I guess, clean out the digestive system if, if that's actually possible I don't know and I felt a lot of benefits when I when I did that uh, I completed the program it was one month and then I just I just went back to eating the standard American diet however I was pretty still focused on eating you know organic food and so at that point I guess I was only plant-based that first year for about one month um, but as time went on that sort of ideology stuck with me and I, it kept me curious because I started realizing that there were people that, you know, were, were vegetarian, that were, that were vegan. And it was never something, it's funny because I think the first time I heard of vegetarian, I was in high school and it just, the reaction was so weird. I was like, what, you don't eat meat? Like, that's so weird. But, but something inside of me, was like, hmm, it, it was like this little seed that was planted. And I thought my, my whole goal was to just attain a higher level of health. I wanted to feel like I was in control um, of my own personal health. Um, I wasn't really satisfied with um, the medical community for some different things that I needed attention with. And I, I was really committed to just, you know, finding out for myself. Um, then a couple years later, around 2011, I went to a yoga training for nine weeks. And at that training, I met I made a friend who was actually a raw vegan for three years. So she really influenced me um, and encouraged me on the path. And so I said, hey, why not? Let me just try this again. So throughout the nine weeks of the teacher training, and again, this is at the end of 2011, I just, I just jumped right in. I didn't think anything of it. And in, in the beginning, it was great. Um, a, a lot of inflammation in my body was, was reduced. Um, like joint, some joint pain went away and like I had a lot of energy, so I didn't really see anything wrong with that. And then again, after completing that yoga training program, I come back to Boston, start teaching and I just go back to eating, you know, normal food. I'd go out with my friends, get burgers. I mean, whatever. I, I didn't care. Like it, it was always just sort of like like a short-term exper experiment. I never, at this point, I hadn't actually taken it on as like a complete lifestyle um, as far as raw vegan. Um, and so this is like 2012-ish. Yeah, 2012. I just kind of started feeling really bad again. And um, I guess maybe like inflammation or just the digestion was off and I thought, you know what, maybe I should try the, the vegan thing again. And so I just uh, just completely decided that 
from now on, for the rest of my life, I'm going to be a raw vegan. So that's that's when I decided, okay, let me let me try this. And that was my four years stretch from to 2017. It was when I went pretty hard. And um, I would say like, like two or three months into it, I was fine. And then things started just getting weird. Um, I just like, I didn't go into the to the diet with any like like mental problems or like depression or anything like that but those things started showing up and like i really didn't know why so i, I came across uh the mucusless diet healing system professor arnold Errett, and <laughs> I, I like that you give that you you know give that shout out with in your steve jobs video i think that's that's a really accurate mm -hmm. analysis and stuff like that um i i follow that diet to a t and and even though in the community they they really do talk about um, a long-term transition. They 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 do not rec recommend jumping into fruit fasting or or radical cleansing. But that is the that is the end goal. That is the destination. Whether it takes you two years, five years, ten years, the the idea is that you're constantly working to transition away from animal foods towards a fruitarian diet and so to someone that's going into that with the mindset of wanting to achieve like the highest highest state of health th there's a very trendy progression where first you go vegetarian then you go vegan then you go raw vegan then you become liquidarian and then you go breatharian like as if and it's just crazy because there's actually there's like real people having real retreats. And I, I went to one of them. Like I actually met up with some of these guys from the Facebook group. This was probably 2015 now, maybe 2014. I went to Amsterdam for a, for a weekend thing. And I, I was high as hell, man. I was on like two and a half weeks of fruit juice. And I'm in Amsterdam. And we go to this like boot camp with this, I won't mention his name, but it's just like one of these breatharian guys and it was a trip like i had a good time but ultimately the the vegan diet is just it, it just totally drains you of all of your reserves I, I never got totally totally emaciated i did lose about maybe maybe 30 pounds like i averaged around 150 155 um i think i got down to 120 um it, it it didn't look horrible. Didn't well, look you went bad. from 155 to 120. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, somewhere around like 120, 125, something like that. It was, and, it was like a what's your height? Uh, six foot. Six foot, 120. Okay. Not too yeah. bad. All right. Whatever you say, buddy. Yeah. Well, because, you know, I'm a yoga instructor. It's like, it's kind of normal for like yoga people to be a little sl sl slender, slim, or whatever like that. And um, I, I did have a couple comments from, students here and there but but I, like, I always had energy like, I could always teach my classes because I was so freaking high on the fruit juice man I mean and uh, it took me a long time to sort of realize like how well, what a negative impact it is being on like high sugar especially in the fruit because it just man it just blasts your bloodstream your brain it's and that there's there's a lot of ups and downs coaster. oh yeah it's a complete roller coaster and 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 truth be told, I, I I was drinking coffee throughout the whole time, and you know putting the sugar in the coffee, and you know it is it is what it is. But um, let's see where where am I where am I really going with this? Like the, you the, met the, you met those people in Amsterdam, two thousand fifteen. Right. Feel like the vegan diet drained you over those four years. Yeah. the The only benefit that I'm still perplexed about is that. While I was doing that fasting, the juice and the the raw part, I could lay in the sun for hours. I mean, I would go to the to the arboretum here and lay out for like one or two hours and never get a sunburn, which I I always got sunburned, and I, I don't I don't know if that's just attributed to the maybe like a lack of grains in the diet. Uh, like I definitely wasn't mm. consuming grains. Um, so I'm I'm really I'm really curious about that. Yeah, high omega but, six 
So the answer to that is high omega-6 in the diet, plant-based fats cause the skin to burn and lack of vitamins cause the skin to burn. And if okay. you're consuming a lot of fruits, fruits have the most available form of carotene out of any natural food. So you might have been one of those people who had a genetic predisposition to converting carotene to retinol. Uh, so it, it's a twofold thing. It's the removal of inflammation and possibly depending on your genes, your ability to convert carotene in some capacity. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. Um, but that, that benefit did not outweigh the cons that I began to experience uh, as I continued with the diet. Um, and, you know, I'm human, man. Like, there, there were definitely times where I was maybe, like, feeling low and I would, I would cheat on the diet. I had a whole month where I, and during the w one winter where I'm drinking fruit juice all day long, teaching my yoga classes, um, coming home, and just having pizza every single night. And I'm just like, what, what the hell am I doing? And it wasn't really like that much of an impact um, on me per se, but um, it was just kind of like, I, I don't think that's really like a healthy. Um, when, was the, when was the pizza exactly? Oh, that, that pizza was like 2015. This was like um, vegan pizza? No, no, it wasn't. Here. <laughs> oh, okay. No, it wasn't vegan pizza. So, so I, I think what, what, what happens there is that a lot of you know a lot of vegans cheat on their diet and there's like a psychological aspect to it because you're trying to really convince yourself that you know what 99% of the human population eats is wrong and so then you know you're you're trying to hold yourself out at, in a public image as as being this certain way and you just get I mean I can't speak for everybody for me it's just like you get really obsessed with um, you know staying true to what your diet is so you you don't want to you want to feel like you know you're being like totally authentic with, with people and if, if you're saying like yeah, i'm a vegan this is what i'm doing like what the, what the hell am i doing you know grubbing down on this pizza mm -hmm. you know every freaking night it's so and, would you say you you crave the pizza and how often did you do that um i probably did that for like a month and then just i just stopped doing it and then i just started eating after that i just started eating pretty much normal vegan food i would bake my own food um like every type of vegan option like vegan mac and cheese like i would make it myself but you know it's just processed food so you were vegan um, for like two years then you had this month of breaking it yeah with pretty much pizza and then <laughs> yeah. well but that two years of vegan before was that like a lot of juice fasting mostly raw vegan yeah a lot of a lot of um not extended juice fasting, but you know, it's sometimes like a day here and there, um, a couple weeks, one time, and then yeah, that that two years. That what did your to, meals typically? What did your like day typically look like during that two year period? I would basically start. I'd have basically lemon water in the morning, probably like a liter. I would mostly have fruit juice during the day, um, maybe some fruit, um, and then salads. So I was pretty. Um, like organized with it, I would say I would. I basically have like fruit in the morning and salads in the evening, mm -hmm. and uh, I I did a lot of experimenting. Like I love to cook. I love to like be in the kitchen and you know put together different recipes. So I, I kind of went all out there. I mean, I I bought, I mean, every single kind of green leafy vegetable that you could juice, and I made all kind types of different juices, and I, it was fun. Like I loved it. Like, um, but it, it's kind of like you're living with this sort of like frantic feeling because you're never just kind of calm and like satiated. Like even though I would eat all this food, um, like I, I feel like I lost the, what it, what it means to like actually be nourished. And like, um, it was as if like, I'm, I'm eating all this food and it's like almost, how do I say it? just convincing myself that, oh yeah, like I got everything I need from this, but yeah. it, empty so calories, much, yeah. empty calories, so much time goes by. It's, you don't really know what normal feels like anymore. And, um, so when you start having problems, but by the time a problems develop and it, and it's like in your face where you're going like, okay, there's something's really wrong. It took a long time for that to develop. It wasn't overnight. And, at that point, you've been so committed to your diet and your lifestyle and proving it to the rest of the world that it's very hard to objectively um, 
you know, look at the, the other opinions of, and, um, luckily I finally did do that. Um, what do you think when you had that pizza for a month were the main driving factors? The, um, like, was it just you like change your lifestyle? Taste, taste boredom. Like you were, you I, I was like craving hungry. it. Was, you were hungry. I was hungry. Yeah. Um, craving calories. Probably. Maybe, mm-hmm. uh, um, I just want, I want a cheese. I, I don't specifically know. It's just. Yeah. It's like, not <laughs> like you were thinking about it at the time. Hey, here, here's the funniest part of that too. Are you familiar with Dr. Robert Morse? Yeah. I've heard of his, I've heard his name quite a few times. So like I would, I would just, I would throw his YouTube on and he, hear this guy's talking all about fruit cleansing and, and healing people. And I, apparently he has a lot of success doing it. I don't know. I never, um, you know, tried any of his methods, but. I'd be sitting here like having a couple IPAs and eating like a full pizza to myself, but I'm trying to watch this dude's video talk about like fruitarianism and stuff. It was like, it was so backwards, man. <laughs> so then you jump back to veganism because the pizza isn't working. Yeah. It, it's not that it didn't work. I mean, maybe because I was technically like only eating one meal a day it, it and I was practicing a lot of yoga at the time. So like honestly, like doing the yoga practice and teaching kind of took precedence over my diet. Like the the diet I always thought was just a way to support myself in the yoga practice. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, it, and it seemed to work for a long time. Um, but at, at a certain point, um, you know, I, I ran into the problems with my teeth. Um, like the front, the fronts of my teeth started getting like almost see through. And dude, I was freaking out. Um, Did you ever go to a dentist? I, um, I didn't. No. Oh, okay. oh, no, no, actually, no, I did go to a dentist a couple times. Um, and I did get a couple cavities filled. Um, and now that I know about, uh, like, you know, Weston Price and um, Dr. Romuald Nagel, have you, you know, his book? No, I haven't. Um, it's, it's um, how to uh, cure, cure, tooth decay naturally, like with diet. I, I don't know the exact title, but mm-hmm. he references a lot from um, Weston Price. And I'm sorry, old- but for those of you that don't know, Weston Price was the dentist who went around in the early 1900s and explored, he was that explored native people. He was curious why they didn't get cavities. Uh, I actually spoke to a young girl a couple of weeks ago that had 17 cavities from going raw vegan uh, over the course of a year. Yeah. Yeah. When my teeth started getting really bad, there was when I was I was consuming a lot of canned uh, split pea soup, um, so it's kind of like I was having fruit juice in the morning. I go teach a couple yoga classes, come home, and I would uh, cook like a whole freaking can of this split pea soup. And um, like now I know, or now we know, like there's a lot of anti nutrients um, in these types of products, and especially just canned food in, in general is like not that great. Were you eating any nuts or any seeds or anything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was definitely eating, um, you know, packets of mixed nuts from Trader Joe's, stuff like that, cashews, um, almonds, um, you know, stuff like that. And uh, that that's when the, it was really starting to, like, people were noticing. Mm-hmm. Um, like, when I went home to California to visit my family, it's like, my mom was like, what? You gotta stop drinking lemon water, Brian. Like, what's <laughs> what's wrong with your teeth? Yeah, there's something to and, be said about uh, the phytates, the phytic acid in legumes and nuts and seeds. It binds to minerals, takes them out of your body. Uh, yeah. You're not really getting any nutrition from those foods, unfortunately. Uh, yeah. And and the big thing is like, no one told you this stuff. You know, no one told you that you're gonna need to soak your food and ferment your food to reduce the anti nutrients. No one told you you need to supplement this, you need to supplement that. They just speak so glamorously about this vegan lifestyle. They don't say, oh, uh, you need to take these supplements or else your, your brain's gonna rot away. Yeah, that's totally true, man. Yeah, I, I, I'd be trying to eat all these different types of fruit, like, I mean, normal stuff like pineapples, oranges, and whatever, and, and, and my teeth were very sensitive. Um, and it's like, it's like I couldn't even eat the food. And I would make these giant salads. And when I would go to eat them, I would just be just stabbing this bowl, trying, trying to eat as fast as I could, like as if I was never going to eat again. And, and many times I, I would like bite the inside of my lip and I'd, I'd be bleeding. It's almost like, it's funny, like it's almost like my body was trying to send me a message like, dude, 
I need to eat some meat. If you're not going to feed it, I'm just going to eat your own <laughs> body. Like, And um, I guess that was kind of just like a funny sign that, you know, maybe I'm not getting like what I need in this diet. And yeah, were you about to say something? No. no. Oh, okay. Um, and yeah, like the worst, the truly the worst that it got was the, the last like two years. Um, I, I, I've not been vegan for probably a year and a half now. So around 2016, 2017, that's when I really started like, like suffering, like mentally and emotionally, which never has been like a real problem in my life. Um, like th there was a feeling just like of like constant anxiety and um, very, very emotional, like stupid, stupid things would like get me upset if like someone said something to me that was hurtful or like I, I took things very, very personally, which 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 normally I, I don't do. Um, like, I mean, I'm judging now that I'm eating, you know, like an animal based diet, high nutrients. I follow your channel. I pretty much try everything that you promote. And like, I feel pretty chill, man. Like things are, things are good. Like I have a positive, like mindset, positive outlook. But during that time, it was, I mean, there were days and days and days of just like, um, feeling like I wanted to die. Like literally just like, just absolutely hating life, hating myself. And like, honestly, like hating people because it's like, you're, you're watching all these other people eating the diet that you're so vehemently opposing and like saying that it's bad, but then you're looking at them thriving and having energy, having them or them having like good relationships with people. And, and it's, you know, vegans will go so far off the deep end about like, oh, like this is the most ethical, you know, empathetic way of, of living. But like a lot of them, including myself, just turn out to just be like really resentful of, of like other human beings. They care more about the animals than, than they do about like human beings life and, and treating other people and being like loving and accepting of other people. And um, th those are um, facets of my like personality that just totally got out of whack and um do you remember any food cravings food cravings um i let's see pizza um i i craved like i would crave like potato chips like salty food um mm -hmm. maybe i definitely crave pastries um and, and a lot of times I would eat vegan versions of them, chocolate chip cookies or mm. go to the co go to the coffee shop and they started carrying vegan items. So I just went to town on these vegan items. And um, mm. I, I don't I don't think I specifically craved meat um, when I when I was vegan. Um, it's hard to have a food but, craving when it's not present in the diet in large amounts before you go vegan. If if the body doesn't really have any sort of recollection of it, it's it's hard to crave it in, in a lot of cases. Uh, yeah, depends well, on I, how I, often you were eating them. Well, I did grow up eating eating meat. I mean, I ate steak, chicken, pork, all that stuff, um, and and rice, potatoes. You know, very like standard American diet. Like, I'm, I'm thankful that I was breastfed. Um, both my parents were not vegetarian. Um, my parents have pretty good genes and um, my mom always cooked, you know, at home. We, we did go out there. I did get into some fast food. We'd have fast food once in a, like, you know, here and there, but it was mostly home cooked meals. So like, I, I think I was raised, I think I had a pretty nutritionally complete upbringing, which I'm uh, very, very thankful for. And yeah, that, that's, that's about it with that. I mean, yeah, fortunately, humans are designed to get like 80% of their calories from energy sources. So for vegans, you know, even though you're not eating that much protein, that much fat, you can still utilize carbohydrates. And I think it's safe to say anyone 
whose genes aren't prone to metabolizing carbohydrates effectively died already thousands of years ago. Yeah. Uh, just a couple interesting notes to touch on. Uh, you know, you thought the organic fruits and veggies were expensive, but per calorie, they probably weren't really more expensive than the meat because you weren't right. really getting calories. Yeah. Uh, the those raw vegans and like those festivals you went to, did you notice anything about those people? Um, yeah. I mean, I only went to did one. They smell. Um, no, they didn't smell. Um, they, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I don't think I, I, I don't think I smelled too much uh -oh. of it. Uh -oh. but, but I don't. Uh, <laughs> that can't be true. I, I, I smell the same. I smell even on like this carnivore diet. Well, I, I shouldn't say I'm on the the carnivore diet, but it's it's the bulk of my diet. Um, and no, what what I noticed is that it was just. It was just a lot of people that had, had trauma in their life. A lot of people that were like searching for answers. They were trying to heal, um, and trying to you know heal from depression, heal from anxiety, or heal from some trauma, um, and you know th things of that that nature. I think a lot of people get attracted to the the flashy lifestyle aspect and thinking that uh, veganism um, cleansing is going to you know, help those issues. That's not why I got into it. I wanted just, you know, higher, higher. I just wanted to like have like the best diet. And I was like, oh, if this is if this is better, you know, why not do this? But interestingly enough, long term, I I end up getting those same problems that other other people were going coming to the diet for, and that's that's kind of what I saw. That's and yeah, yeah. Um, so how did so, your did your bowel movement change outside of, you know, when I'm sure you were shitting your pants doing those fiber cleanses? <laughs> um, the bowel movements, they, they were better. Uh, and they a lot were more worse. volume. More well, I guess, yeah, more volume, more frequently. A um, couple, maybe like one or two times a day. The, the thing about when I was following the mucusless diet healing system, they, they really promoted the use of enemas. So, um, I mean, you know what those are, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, so like that was just part of the part of the program, part of the cleansing program. You would, you know, you would just kind of incorporate that into your lifestyle. I was like, oh, whatever. And and honestly, I think they they helped me, um, but probably because like I wasn't able to like push through all that fiber. I don't I don't really know. The funny thing um, to me about that mucusless diet system is like your intestines and your stomach and and a lot of your body is literally lined with mucus as a membrane. You know, it seems like a pretty silly concept if someone has an understanding of anatomy. Uh, yeah. When you were with these, like, these breatharian people, I mean, why couldn't they just call it fasting? I, Did that not I, click I really in anyone's head? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess it's I not as good of a marketing term. But you kind of, uh, you know, you kind of understated. You went from 155 to 120 pounds at six foot. Yeah. So you lost quite a bit of weight, and then I'm assuming you gained it back when you went to the more cooked vegan diet and the pizza stuff. Yeah, I did. I did gain it back, and and now I'm like at 160. Um, and I feel good. Um, eating a lot of, you know, meats. The the one thing that I'm doing now that I just love, and I it sucks, man, that you're allergic to the raw milk because that the raw milk, man, is just it's delicious. It's very it's, good. It's delicious, and it it changed my life, man. Um. Since going back to, um, you know, meat, I, I didn't go right into like a clean carnivore, you know, regimented, man. I, I'd be going to the bar, man, having a couple of beers, getting some burgers and, you know, eating pizza and stuff like that. That's, that's fine. Like whatever. But it definitely impacted my body a lot. I got a lot of inflammation. Um, and the interesting thing is, is that in October, my knee. Uh, completely flared up to the point that I was on crutches for two weeks. So I go to the doctor. He gives me ibuprofen. That gate that reduced the inflammation just enough to where I could get off of the crutches, but I still had the knee pain for 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 months. And it slowly got better. Um, and then again, it flared up just about three or four weeks ago. I and I went to a rheumatologist. They did a they did blood work. Um, the the only significant thing they found was my vitamin D was low, it was twenty five, and 
I was like, you know what? Screw this. I'm going to go to the farm. I'm going to get some raw milk. And literally the day that I started, I drank like a, like a whole half gallon. Literally that day, um, all the inflammation in my body just started going away. And, and it, 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 it had a bigger impact than even taking the ibuprofen did. And like, I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, this is just like anecdotal evidence or whatever. But like, I, I'm pretty in tune and I know how I feel. Like I spent months with this, with this goddamn knee and like not being able to, you know, walk properly and being able to have to go up the stairs and, and, and the milk just like blasted it like out of the water. And, um, so like now I'm like really into like making like homemade kefir, like different stuff, cream. Um, I saw your YouTube video about making the raw butter. I'm going to try that. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm just I'm just having a lot of fun, man. It's like it's really cool. Yeah, there's something to be said about the importance of nutrient density in the diet. And yeah. I can't I can't even get carnivore dieters to eat nutrient dense food. So to convince the average person that these vitamins are so important is difficult. If people understood that these vitamins are literally precursors to every cell being made in the body, they might start thinking a little bit differently. Uh, right. One interesting thing about the the raw milk is is that it's nutritionally complete. Essentially, if you had any sort of vitamin or nutritional deficiency, whether it's iodine, omega-3, vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin K, your body is getting it from that raw milk. Yeah. 100% for sure. Yeah. And I definitely felt an energy boost. Like, over this winter, I was extreme. I was getting sick a lot. Um, and it was notably after eating chicken. And now I know from watching your channel that the high omega-6. is very um, inflammatory, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There was a there was a time in the summer where I I just went to Trader Joe's and like bought a whole chicken, baked it, and ate it. It was delicious. I I almost ate the whole freaking thing, but I got very very sick. Uh, like I had a fever, and I didn't really think anything of it. But the second time it happened, which was a few months later, uh, I just like made some chicken wings at home, organic, whatever, and and the same thing happened. Like I got a like a wicked fever, and it just sucked, man. It was. It was horrible, and um, now it's it, it, and ever ever since those two events, which which were this this past year, like once in the summer and once uh, like during the fall, um, I had extremely low low fatigue or no high fatigue. I mean, well, how do you ever say it? I was extremely tired all the time, and um, after like drinking the milk, it just that all went away. So I, I'm assuming it's because of the vitamin D. Um, could be it for sure. There, there's so but, many factors there that, that could be changing it for sure. Yeah. Uh, Brian, did you want to leave anyone with a message overall about your experience? Any words of warning? Um, any words of warning? Yeah. Don't, don't go vegan, guys. <laughs> don't do it. You essentially got tricked into it for a health, the health reason. Usually people do have, um, you know, strong moral implications going into it. You're different in a way that you adapted the moral implications along the way and, right. and tried to justify it. Thankfully, uh, you know, you kind of realized on your own, this is not really a good look. Were there any specific like people or um, like things that kind of convinced you that what you should be doing after I guess outside of my channel. Um, yeah, the the first person before your channel was uh, Sverage. Um, I that was at the height of me just kind of going like mental. I was just like, what the fuck is wrong with me? So I saw his channel. I saw him eating the raw meat, and I was like, this guy's crazy. But like, the one thing is like, I'll definitely look at other people's perspective and like try to like eh, quote like empty the cup is so yeah. to say. Like I was like, okay, let me like. Let me listen to this guy and like really see what he has to say. And when he started showing all the vegans and how they have like mental problems and this, that, the other thing, and started talking about the fat soluble vitamins and eating meat, I just slowly just realized like, holy shit, like I'm I'm one of these people that he's talking about. And I was like, I have to stop this immediately because this is just out of control. And um so that that's that's the only really the other person him and um, that that book uh, by uh, Rami Rami Nagel I think that's how you say his name mm -hmm. I'm probably getting that wrong but um, 
unfortunately he passed away, but the, the book is amazing. Uh, so I got a lot of information from that book and, mm -hmm. and, and now your channel, man, I, I dig your channel. I watch it like every day. <laughs> Glad to hear it. That book is cure tooth decay, heal and prevent cavities with nutrition by Ramiel Nagel. Yeah, that's a great book. I, it's, it's worth the read. And, um, that, that, that's the book that got me started drinking the raw milk again. Cause I was, when I, when I transitioned back into the meat world, I went like vegan to, ah, oh, let me just have some raw milk. Oh, okay. Let me have some eggs after like five months. I was like, give me some raw steak. <laughs> and that's, that's all it is. <laughs> Glad to hear it. Uh, did you want to share any social media with anyone? Um, I, I think I'm not really very active on social media, man, but, um, Thanks for the opportunity for right. that. I mean, I just, Sounds just good. We don't, we don't need any Neanderthals bothering you, that's for sure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> cool, man. Well, uh, it was good to connect with you, Frankie, man. I really appreciate all that work you're doing and um, helping to create some content for your channel and just, just say what's up, man. It's, it's well, really cool. Thank you. No, this is fun, Brian. Thanks for coming on. Uh, you guys enjoy the rest of your week. All right, let's say bye to everyone. All right, bye, peace, guys. guys.